Good afternoon, everyone. It's my great pleasure to welcome you to this very important session talking about the blue education, building knowledge systems for the ocean future. As we know in economy, we have green economy, white economy, blue economy, different colors of economies. And in blue economy where resources are in oceans, seas, so we may think that we need to focus on the resources underwater. But actually, our nations nowadays, regarding the challenges and the global supply chain requirements, we need to focus on skills and knowledge above the sea. Let me to have two outstanding speakers in this session who have made major contribution in this field. Professor Tanuja Koshek, Dean of Academic Affairs at the Jajarat Maritime University in India. Dr. Shelley Bengiat, Director and CEO of Envirotech Education, founder of Corals in Australia. Let me to start with you, Professor Tanuja. I would like to begin asking about how can literacy and vocational training prepare communities for the blue economy? What kind of policy actually do we need as framework to support and scale such education to be prepared for the future? Thank you, Professor. Uh, first of all, let's understand what is ocean literacy. If we talk about ocean literacy, it means understanding how ocean influences us and how we influence the ocean for sustainable governance. So to have an ocean literacy, it is important that it should be for all. If I talk about in terms of my country, India, in India, if you see whether literacy is there, ocean literacy is there all over India or not, we will find that when you have a coastal region, the awareness is there. But if you go to North India, the awareness is not there. So the first of all, when we talk about ocean literacy, the first thing that we need to do is to create awareness. Now, how do we create awareness? That is the second question which comes to our mind. So the awareness can be created by developing a curriculum, a curriculum which is developed at the early stage of school. So when a, stu when a child goes to a school, there should be some curriculum, some early stage awareness about the blue economy. When we come to higher education, where I represent Gujarat Maritime University, there also it is important, not only in maritime sector, but also in other discipline also, we need to have a value-added courses or maybe a mandatory courses on blue economy. Then only we can understand, then only we can bring ocean literacy all over the world over the India. We know 90% of the global trade happens through sea. So if students, if young generations are not aware about this uh, whole ocean literacy, we will we not be able to bring that. Also, when we talk about curriculum, we have to be very clear. It should be outcome based learning. It cannot be all theoretical. Outcome based learning means when I say that everybody should have a common structure, we need to have a multidisciplinary project where whether it is a law student or an engineering student or a maybe management student, design students, they come together and do some project related to blue economy. Also, when we talk about vocational training, training should not be only technical. We know most of our seafarers are for a long time on sea. So the skill based, as you said, it should not just be a technical training. It should be skill based training where behavioral team building, teamwork, these crisis management, such kind of topics should be dealt with so that vocational training is not only technical, but skill based. So I think if you look at all these things, we'll be able to have ocean literacy and vocational training can add to, you know, preparing our community for blue economy. Thanks, Professor uh, Tanuja. Excellent, uh, especially concerning the awareness for the education and different generations to be prepared as future leaders in oceans. Thank you. Professor Dr. Shelley, I know you have experience in vocational and environmental training. So I'm wondering to ask about what approaches have proven most effective in connecting education with sustainable blue economy jobs. Thank you so much. It's a very important topic as we heard in the last couple of days a lot about sustainable blue economy and about ocean health. So the currency that ocean health should be measured is ocean life. Ocean life is the real indicator whether ocean is actually in a good, healthy 
condition. So marine life can actually um, grow rather than diminish. And so um, there are different initiatives to grow vocational education. However, the environmental sector was mostly uh, absent from the vocational education. It was more done by research and development at university degrees, which meant that a lot of communities, especially fisher communities, were outside these um, initiatives. So what we see as best practices is that environmental training and vocational training should touch the water before they wow. actually manifested in research and paper development. And we have experience in development of sustainable blue economy initiatives with nature-based solution. So what we find as best practices is stackable vocational education training, starting from certificate one that can be done in in a primary schools to certificate two level that can be done in high schools and then certificate three which is the um, trade level in Australia and then certificate four and diploma that could be incorporated into university degrees. Many times we find university degrees would take three to four years where students don't have a tangible accreditation that they can already enter the industry. So by bringing vocational education to these different education periods and giving tangible accredited training, which is project-based, so very specific outcomes. Each one of our communities are responsible for our backyards. Each backyard is different. In tropical water, we will focus on corals, in other spaces on kelps and so on. And I believe that the maritime industry is the best and most equipped in terms of resources and infrastructure to actually enable the rehabilitation and, and regeneration of ocean habitats. Thank you very much. And this actually arises a question in my mind because you are talking about the education at university. So how can we align or make sure that universities and industry and government policies to ensure that blue economy education align and relevant with the real world needs? Absolutely. So when we talk about real world needs, again, coming back to our backyards, looking at um, environmental impact, of course, ports and maritime create an impact in the uh, shipment routes. And um, at the same time, they have all the infrastructure to actually enable this offset. So, for example, looking at the maritime industry and the ports, the ports have the uh, ability to um, get certain projects like aquaculture, so propagate marine life so we can reduce fisheries and work with fishing communities to produce life on land as well as um, when we are ready for it to restock ocean. In many spaces we look at and we train about marine conservation. However, yeah. we should take the next step for marine restoration. And we do that on land. We understand that we need to replant and revegetate. However, in ocean space, we at the very most can create um, protected areas which actually don't enable us to develop. We can look at spaces where we have, uh, for example, uh, energy production at mm -hmm. sea, and we can attach to these facilities biodiversity enhancers. They're basically a hiding spaces where different marine species can populate which would be amazing infrastructure to install, whether on gas rigs or other areas. Wave breakers yeah. can be done in such ways that the outskirts of the ports can be the inside homes of marine habitats. Thank you, Dr. Shili. Very interesting. I will go back to Professor Koshek. You talked about curriculum, and Dr. Shili, she was talking about the how we link this in the education. My question, what models have worked best for connecting academic programs with maritime logistics industry, especially if you come from maritime university? Yes, yeah. Uh, you know, we are talking about higher education 5.0. Higher education 5.0 says that it is not just about digitalization or online pl pl platform. It has to, the technology has to integrate with human values, ethics and sustainability. So coming to the collaboration, this collaboration 
can only happen when industry, academic and policy makers come together. And from where I belong to, Gujarat Maritime University, Gujarat Maritime University is promoted by Gujarat Maritime Board, which is a governing body, policy makers. We are the university. And through Gujarat Maritime Board and otherwise also, we get links and we get support from different logistic companies, from ports, from shipping. So when we develop our curriculum, our curriculum is such way developed that it is it is more industry focused our students who go and uh, come to the industry they are more trade also when these three partners come together we could talk about gender and if you talk about maritime sector, we all know that women representation is really less. Worldwide, it is very less, not about only India, but otherwise also it is very less, less than 5%. So I think such kind of collaboration can help us to do gender diversity. It can also help us in, you know, upskilling and adaptability. Uh, because uh, because of technology, because of dig digitalization, you need to keep on updating yourself. So that can only happen if you have this collaboration. So these co collaboration of academic industry and policy makers is must in order to Excellent. sustain. Excellent. Thank you very much. Last question in one minute for each speaker. You come from different geographic location, you are from India, you are from Australia. So different regional context as well, actually. So how do you see North-South knowledge exchange ensure quality and building the next generation of ocean leaders, Dr. Shelley? Thank you. I believe that our different location and different education frameworks actually empower us when we put them together to have a much stronger capacity to create first of all, global standards and enhance each other's capabilities. And I believe that since the maritime industry creates international roots, mm -hmm. that is a wonderful platform to align as well transnational accreditation. So doing projects and exchange and okay. add knowledge and create dual accreditation standards. Thank you very much, Professor. Thanks. Yeah, see, whether you talk about global north or global south, I think what matters is two-way learning. Even when we go to class as a teacher, we say ki, it is not that we are just teaching them. We are also learning from students. Same applies to global north or global south. So we should take the strength of each others. So if the strength of global north is, let's say, innovation on maybe infrastructure or funding, and the global south has the strength of, let's say, human capital and local knowledge, then I think if they both come together, we can do wonders. So I think no, whether it is north to south, south to south, or south to south, because yes. we, you are from Egypt, so yes. south to south, or north to south, I think we need to have an exchange program, not just a student exchange program or a faculty exchange program, industry related project based sure. learning and other exchange program also. And I think then we can do wonders in maritime sector. Thank you very much. So uh, let me to conclude what has been discussed. Uh, thank you very much for both of you outstanding speakers. So it's very obvious that the blue economy uh, from your speeches will shared by people and knowledge, not only limited to infrastructure and technology. This is what we need to highlight. And collaboration as uh, highlighted by our speakers among education, industry, policy, and across North and South. This is a key to sustainability and sustainable ocean futures to have future leaders in maritime transport. Thank you once again to our panelists and to all of our uh, audience who is listening to this studio for joining this important dialogue. Thank you very much, Khaled Sakti, and the speakers were with you. Thank you. Thank you.